Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, Retinal Specialist at Marashi Eye Clinic, Aleppo, Syria. This presentation is about OCT features in diabetic macular edema. At the first visit, ordering OCT, especially when best corrected visual acuity is less than 2020, is important because it will help us to document and learn about the pattern, location, thickness of the edema and vitromacular interface status of the macula, all of which can affect our treatment plan and visual prognosis. OCT can be ordered again after several weeks based on our treatment plan to monitor the effectiveness of treatment. Further, it can help us to decide whether it is mandatory to change, stop, or continue with the current treatment plan. Here is an example of OCT for a patient with diabetic macular edema, and the upper image shows cross-sectional OCT of thickened macula with interretinal cysts and intact vitromacular interface. The second image is an OCT map which shows the location of the edematous tissue and its thickness. This OCT for the same patient after receiving four intravitreal injections of bifazizumab and as seen in the upper image, macular thickness is reduced. And the second image shows a reduced central macular thickness with residual extrafovea thickening, which requires focal laser treatment. What we should look for in OCT image. One of the main information that we obtain from OCT is macular thickness, which is important to measure pre and post treatment to value its efficacy. However, macular thickness is not a marker of declined vision, and the relation between central macular thickness and vision is modest. OCT can tell us about the location of the edema, whether it is central or not, and thus can shift our treatment plan. OCT can be used as a guide in some cases for laser photocoagulation, particularly when planning for modified grid laser. As seen in the OCT map in the right, that edema is mainly non-central. However, some of the edema is in the contact with the fovea. OCT can show us this organization of the retinal inner layers, which is associated with reduced visual acuity, especially in patients with central involved diabetic macular edema. In more than 50% or within one millimeter of the foveal center. For example, each 299 micron increase in the extent of disorganization of the retinal inner layers over a four month period was associated with a one line decrease in visual acuity in eight months. Nevertheless, an independent factor in reduced vision is disruption of the photoreceptor inner segment outer segment layer because it reflects damage to the photoreceptors, which may reflect chronic macular edema along with diffuse pattern. Here is an example of cross-sectional OCT image that shows a disorganization of the retinal inner layers presented with a large cyst. And in addition of disruption of the photoreceptor inner segment outer segment layer, this patient may not have an excellent prognosis after treatment. OCT can tell us about diabetic macular edema pattern, which can be presented as diffuse macular thickness, cystoid macular edema, serous retinal detachment, and vitreal macular interface abnormalities. The improvement in vision and macular thickness is better in cystoid macular edema and worse in vitro macular interface abnormalities after injecting intravitreal anti-VGF agents. In the upper image, we can see an example of cross-sectional OCT with diabetic macular edema with diffuse macular thickness, while the second image is cross-sectional OCT with diabetic macular edema with serous retinal detachment and some interretinal cysts. OCT can check integrity of vitreal macular interface. When the tractional element is presented in diabetic macular edema, our management would be parsplanar vitrectomy with intra-limiting membrane peeling in cases of moderate visual loss instead of intravitreal anti-VGF blockade. 
The image at the right is a cross-sectional OCT of thickened macula with focal attachments of epiritual membrane disrupting the inner surface of the retina. However, when vitreal macular interface abnormality is presented, but the main element of diabetic macular edema is a microvascular abnormality, intravitreal anti-VEGF agents may have reduced effect. However, the best way to confirm the presence of vascular element is by fluorescein angiography. The image at the right is a cross-sectional OCT of thickened macula with intravitreal cysts and vitreal macular interface abnormality without focal attachment of epirical membrane disrupting the inner surface of the retina. Ordering OCT can help us to learn about the edema, to determine the visual prognosis, to choose our treatment plan, and to monitor the effectiveness of treatment. Disorganization of retinal inner layer, central retinal thickness, and disruption of the photoreceptor layer are visual prognostic factors, while vitreal macular interface integrity and in conjunction of diabetic macular edema pattern is an important for treatment planning. At the end, I hope you find this presentation is beneficial for your everyday practice.